Hey friends, today we're going to go over Ableton's automation within arrangement view. Automation is how you change parameters over time and how you can create some movement in your tracks. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what I have here. This is just a little excerpt from my song Euclidia and there's a lot of movement in this bass line wiggly thing. All right, so let's take a listen to what this track is doing. track. So in order to see the automation, you got to go up here to this little guy and click on it. This is the automation mode switch. Alternatively, if you don't have your keyboard engaged, you can hit the A key. Whoa. So all, <laughs> all these red line things right here, this is automation. So in this case, this is the volume automation. So if I click on this, I see it. If I click on something else though, such as panning, it disappears, right? Pretty interesting stuff. So also, if you'll look right here, you can see where it says mixer. If I click over here, you'll see that it says track panning and there isn't a little red dot on it. So anything that has a red dot on it in either of these drop down lists, that means that there's automation in there, okay? So at this point, Mixer is the device that I'm using. Now, Mixer is not a device that's sitting in a track. It just happens to be there already. But if I click on this drop-down list, I can see all the devices that are in this track. I have a Timeless. I have a Serum. I have some other plugins hanging out that don't have any automation on them. So we can see the plugins that have automation. So let's click on Serum, for example. And now, underneath of Serum, there's not a red dot by this parameter, but if I click on this down list, there is some automation on a couple of these parameters. So this is the wavetable position and this is the cutoff. So instead of using Serum and maybe a plugin that you're not familiar with, I decided to copy this baseline to this track. We'll just delete this automation here for this. And so now we can just listen to this wavetable okay and what we're going to do is we're going to go through here and we're going to automate some parameters in wavetable all right and what that means is we're going to change some parameters over time so first of all let's get a usable sound here so that's just not going to work for me i'm going to choose yeah formant and uh tuvan haha <laughs> well, that's cool um blah, 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 blah. Let's try some warping. Okay, that's that's fun. All right, so now that I have a bass sound that I like, I can think about what I want to automate, okay? This is a lot more simple than you think. If I want to automate a parameter in Ableton Live, it's just as simple as clicking on the parameter I want to automate. Let's say I want to automate the filter frequency. So I just clicked on it. If you look up here, filter frequency is now selected. If I want to automate the volume, you can see the oscillator one gain is there. Just click on the parameter you want and it will appear in this drop down list, right? Wavetable, whatever it is. So let's go with cutoff first. So this is the filter frequency of filter one. If I click on, if I turn on filter two, the even the on switch can be automated. So all kinds of stuff can be automated. Let's go ahead and get in here and we're gonna open the filter frequency over time. So when you click on it, you see this red line move when I move this, it's showing you with this red line where the parameter is sitting, right? So if I click right here, and then I click right here, I can make these little things called breakpoints, right? So this is a breakpoint, and this is a breakpoint. If I click on this breakpoint and push it up, you can see the number is increasing. So what it's showing me, it's actually showing me the, the cutoff frequency of this bass. So let's play this now and listen. Right? So that's the cutoff frequency increasing. Now I can turn up the resonance a little bit, maybe get more of an effect. Right? So I've just automated this parameter. Okay? Now, something that's interesting about this is that if you hover over the breakpoint, you can see the actual parameter's number. You can see where the actual cutoff frequency is at, right? 
Well, something you can do is constantly being adjusting these things to make it so that you like it. I felt like because the beginning of this note is kind of high pitched and it goes, <laughs> um, I needed to start this a little higher in order to hear the bass line, right? So let's listen now. That's better. I also think maybe I could open the amp up a little bit. Let's try this. There we go. Also, for those of you that are wondering how I did that kind of like over time, if you look real close here, you can see that there is a tiny little note all the way up here, and it's going down to this B down here. So there's a really high B and a really low B. And then in wavetable, I just chose mono, and then the glide time is really long, almost, you know, it's two and a half seconds long. That's why it goes, do. All right, anyway. So. So that's not enough movement. That's some movement. It's cool. It's moving a little bit. There's a pitch change and then there's a, a cutoff change. Well, let's look at the uh, wave position. Maybe we'll do that. That'll be fun. So maybe we'll start this uh, high and go low instead. So we'll start this at 61% and go down to 20% and see what happens. Okay, that's cool. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher. So this is how you just kind of create breakpoints. Now, there's a totally other process that we can do. We can hit the B key, and then that makes a little pencil, right? See this little pencil guy right here? Uh, also, you can just click on this draw mode switch, right? So that's what that is. If you hit the B key or hit this pencil, you get draw mode. So in this case, I have my grid engaged, right? So let's see, what do we want to automate? So let's try to use the pencil tool on this fold. So I just clicked on fold, now we have oscillator one effect two enabled, right? So if I take this pencil tool and I start to draw, I'm just clicking and dragging, right? Do you see how, do you see what's happening? We have, using Ableton's grid, it is now changing this parameter over time. So we're kind of getting like, this is sort of like a sample and hold kind of effect. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Maybe we'll go a little bit lower and see what we got. Right, so that's kind of fun. Maybe maybe this is one of those things that we want to do. Um, but in this case, I'm going to show you something else. If I turn off the grid, right click anywhere in here and I turn the grid off, now the pencil tool becomes this free, you know, control that I can just kind of yo way you let, right? <laughs> so now let's listen to that. All right, now we're getting some movement. Cool. Let's try this. And also, I'm noticing we're starting to lose some low end, so I'm going to turn on this sub and maybe make it go an octave higher. Let's see what we have now. Okay, cool. So as you can see, this pencil tool is freaking sweet. You know, you can draw in all kinds of crazy stuff. So maybe also for the gain of this sub, I kind of want to ramp it up at the end. Let's see what happens. Nice. Okay. So that's kind of a quick and dirty way to make some some automation just with your just with your hand. Like it's it's a little bit unwieldy sometimes. So sometimes it's nice to just open this up a little bit. See how you can just like click on the bottom of this track and open it up. You know, and let's say I wanted to get a little bit more at the beginning. You know, it's a little bit easier to draw in like subtle stuff, right? So yeah. Cool. All right. So moving on, let's go to the second thing right here. So now we have no movement here. Let's go ahead and take a look back at the filter frequency, right? So again, if I click anywhere on this bar, I'm gonna make a break point, right? Because I'm back out of draw mode. I'm in the normal mode, the normal automation mode, right? So let's try the same thing this time, okay? But the next thing I wanna show you is that you don't have to be locked into using these you know, completely linear curves, right? Musically, it doesn't really make sense to always do things linearly, right? In, in, in music, if we want to make a different kind of sound, sometimes it's nice to make exponential and logarithmic curves. Now, the way that you do this, in fact, let's just make this real high and let's take a listen. So that's the kind of automation we've been doing up until this point. Let's try something else. I'm going to hover my mouse over underneath of this line, and if I hold Option, look at what happens. See that little wiggly line, that little line that goes beside the mouse? If I click, if I hit Option and then I click on my mouse, and then I drag up or down, we can, look at that, we can skew the wave, right? So one thing 
that might sound cool is starting down low and then whap, whapping up to the top, right? So, yow, right? <laughs> That's nice. So maybe it makes more sense to add more resonance here, right? Another thing we can do is select this area. Check it out, check it out. If we select this area, then we hover the mouse underneath of this bar, boom, the whole thing can move up. So this is a really fast way to get some quick automation. We have lower resonance for this first part, higher resonance for the second part. So let's listen to what we got this far. Here's this next part. <laughs> nice. So in the case that you're enjoying my teaching style, I also wanted to tell you that I'm making Ableton online courses. They'll be covering macro topics like mixing, sound design, composition, songwriting, live performance, and more. I should say you can always learn anything you want to learn on YouTube, but much of the time it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for. These courses will be thorough, optimized, and organized to help take your skills to the next level fast. So at the time of this video, I've only just begun creating the courses, but if you want to be notified when they're available, click this link at the bottom in the description or in the comments, and I'll notify you when they're ready. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, so let's try something else. Here's this MIDI controller, right? Um, just a little UC4, right? So another thing that you can do for automation is you can record it, okay? So another thing we can do is click on MIDI mapping, right? And let's choose the warp. So I'm clicking on warp. You see, I just clicked on that. Now I'm just going to take this MIDI controller and move this slider. So now I can dynamically control with my MIDI controller. I can control the warp, blah, 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 right? Okay, so now that I have warp mapped to this controller, right, and I can move it, what I can do now is just record into the track. Now make sure that the track itself isn't armed because what that will do is it'll force you to make a new clip, okay? We're just gonna record, this is just the arrangement record button and we have the automation arm button selected, right? We wanna make sure this thing is on, okay? So now I'm gonna record some automation with my MIDI controller, right? So just I'll just hold it up here so you can watch it, right? So. Right? So now you can see that what we've got here is this like kind of wacky series of automation curves that were that and these were all made by me messing with my MIDI controller, right? Sometimes this is a really fast thing to do. Cause then I could go back in here and say, all right, fold. So fold now fold, you are going to be MIDI mapped to this second slider, right? So I clicked on the command I wanted, I moved the slider. Now I can go back and do the same thing again. So I'll just play it from over here. Get ready. <laughs> that was kind of over the top. So yeah, so now that we've got some of these, you know, automations in here, we can further manipulate them, right? So let's go ahead and listen to this first one again. So, I, I, you know, this is kind of crazy, but Bear with me. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try something else. This automation, it works, it's cool, you know, but it's kind of over the top. Another thing Ableton 10 implemented is the ability to mess with these automation curves in a really like awesome way. So something I can do is go in here and select this area, right? All right, what happens when you select an area and you have this, remember this button has to be pressed, the automation mode or the A key, right? You have to be able to see the automation lanes. When I select just the automation, you get these little dots. See this tiny, these tiny little dots here? So something you, that's really cool with this is you can click on the top and uh-oh, no way. You can limit the range and kind of skew the ranges of these automations, right? I can shorten it, lengthen it, Let's listen to this now. Oh, wow. So that's a little bit more manageable, right? Let's go ahead and look at warp and do the same thing. So warp is kind of high. Let's maybe take the bottom of warp and pull it all the way down to the bottom and see if we can get a little bit more of a usable sound. So 
Oh, cool, right? So that's nice. Another thing you can do is click on the end, right? So if you click on some of these ends, you can skew the end and beginnings of this automation. So there's gonna be less automation at the beginning and more at the end, right? So. So yeah, let's move on to the second part. Select the area you want, then you get the little dots, right? So we're gonna try to maybe make this open up over time, right? And then for fold, yeah, this is just, that's just too much. <laughs> All right, so now we'll listen. <laughs> Remember my cutoff was kind of low and I did that little skew. Let's maybe open the beginning of this up a bit, right? So notice that because all this was selected, all this, right? If I click on any of these breakpoints, the entire thing is gonna move, but it's gonna keep its shape. So I'm gonna kind of pull this all the way up a little bit, right? And now we get. <laughs> uh, that's a bit over the top. I'm gonna do something like that. Cool. Okay, so let's take a look at some other features. I'm gonna put this back on narrow. So another thing you can do is you can select an area, and this is just the, let's listen to this before I do anything. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this area, right? And click on the filter frequency. So now we're looking at the filter frequency. If you select the area you wanna mess with, you can also right click, and there's these shapes that you can just insert, right? And these are sometimes useful. So let's do like a downward ramp. Okay, that's useful because all of a sudden I have this downward ramp. Maybe I wanted to draw one. You can just right click and put it in there. Okay, but maybe for the second part, we'll select this area, right click. Maybe I wanted to do a wiggle. <laughs> and you can also <laughs> invert these things by clicking on the top thing and the bottom. Look at that. Oh, we inverted it. Wow. So now we can pull this back down ski and boom, right? Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, too much, but what I can do is select this area right here and pull that up a little bit. This is just not gonna stand, so how do we fix that? Well, we're looking at breakpoints again, right? I took my draw mode off. So if I click on this breakpoint, it'll disappear, right? So now we have a smoother curve, okay? So that's a way that you can fix some of these like jumps that occur when you do this. Right, so I mean, it's just as, it's just as simple as, you know, clicking where you wanna change stuff and then moving breakpoints around. So yeah, let's let's uh, look at something else. Like in Ableton 10, they also implemented something that's really useful for people. If you have a track expanded like this, or you don't even have to have the track expanded, but I kind of find it useful. Let's say we wanted to look at more than one automation parameter at once. Look at this little plus sign. Click on this plus sign, and you have added the wavetable filter frequency to a automation lane, right? So now I can kind of resize this and maybe choose a different one. So I'll go to wavetable and I'll choose wave position, right? So now I'm looking at not only the wavetable filter frequency, but the wavetable position, right? And you can just keep doing this over and over again. So maybe we'll go to, we'll hit add, right? So that makes its own lane. And maybe we'll go to the effect one, right? Hit add, and then we'll go to effect two. So now we are looking at a grand total of four. These are four different automation parameters that are all happening at once. So it makes it really easy to go in here and, you know, edit them all. And it's all right there. Those of you that don't have Ableton 10, I'm sorry for you, but <laughs> this is really interesting, right? I mean, this is a really fast way to be able to edit multiple parameters at once inside of a track, right? Pretty awesome. Cool. Well, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff that I make. So like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you around.